Anyone familiar with website optimization will know that gzip is an essential part of improving page load times and can dramatically reduce the size of static files being transferred to the client. To demonstrate this, we'll use the main style sheet for our WordPress theme, which is located at wp-content-theme-2015-style.css. To tell the server we can accept gzip responses, we'll have to add this accept encoding header and set it to gzip deflate. And if we request the headers for that file, we'll see that there is in fact no mention of gzip as this has not yet been configured. In our configuration file, I'll start by setting the gzip directive to on. And I'm doing this in the server context, meaning that every request to this server block will inherit this, unless explicitly overwritten, of course. Now that gzip is enabled, we can add a few options like gzip minimum length, which sets at which point to start compressing resources. So in our case, we'll say 100, and that's bytes. So any file under 100 bytes will automatically be skipped and not compressed. The default for this directive is 20 bytes, but really compressing a file of 20 bytes to say 10 bytes isn't going to make much of a difference, so probably isn't worth the system resources required to compress it. 100 is a good size, but you can set this based on your own server's requirements. Then we'll set gzip compression level, which tells gzip how much to compress resources by. The higher this number, the more compression is applied, but the more CPU is required. Anything above level 5 will have very little effect anyway, so keep this between 2 and 4. Next, we need to tell Nginx which types of files need to be compressed. We can write this as a string of MIME types like so, text slash plain, text slash CSS, text slash JavaScript, or we can put each on its own line like this. I personally prefer this way as it's a bit more legible. These are the three main types of files that will benefit from being compressed, but of course you can add most static files here, like HTML, PDFs, etc. Finally, we'll add this gzip disable directive. This simply checks the specified string against the user agent header sent by the client and disables gzip should it match. MSIE6 stands for Microsoft Internet Explorer 6, so in that case, Nginx will just disable gzip completely as Internet Explorer 6 never really handled gzip responses very well. Okay, we'll save this, head over to the terminal, and make sure that I didn't make any typos in that configuration file. And the syntax is fine. We'll reload the configuration. And now if we do that same request for the style sheet again, we'll see the response headers include content underscore encoding gzip, meaning that this response is in fact compressed. To check the difference in file size, we can write this response out to a file. And I'll just call that stylesheet underscore compressed dot CSS. And then do the same without the accept encoding header, which will get us the uncompressed file. And write that to stylesheet underscore uncompressed dot CSS. And now if we list those two files, we can see that the same CSS file is reduced from its original 95 kilobytes to a mere 17 kilobytes. That's quite an impressive difference, and when receiving multiple resources, will make for a very significant decrease in page load times in the browser.